Hi, friends. It is I, host Eric Oates, talking to fantasy people. Bringer of the good news. What inspires? That's the title of this video. What inspires? What inspires what, you might ask. Good question. What inspires whom, you might ask. Good question also. Hi, Octavia Silva. Uh, today, Delilah and Danny arrived at the airport. And uh, Rich Simon picked them up, brought them back here. They're in their room at the moment, resting. Delilah's talking Danny's ear off. You know. Um, it's really great to see him. Pretty great to see her, especially, you know. Uh, not that I, I like Danny Fine. I don't he just, uh, he met my daughter. Um, and it's nice to have another extrovert in the mix. Mm -hmm. I was saying to Rachel that I think as an extrovert gets a little bit older, at least it's true for me, that in some ways I get somewhat more introverted. Uh, Nobody would ever mistake me for an introvert, but um, well, some people do. Who? Okay, you know, nutty people who think what they think. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody who, like who made the argument that I'm an uh, INFP, for example. <laughs> Hi, Wait, who says that? Somebody on some post, some <laughs> some post <laughs> stuff. Hello, Winston's mom. Uh, thank you. We missed you as uh, well, Winston's mom. Yes, we talked we. about you last time we uh, live streamed. Jeebus is here. Hello, Jeebus. I am a handsome bastard, aren't I? Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's my handsomest face. <laughs> So the title of this video is What Inspires. I think that everybody needs to feel inspired sometimes, or most of the time, or part of the time at least. Um, Definitely. That some aspect of... What is this? <laughs> I turned off the goddamn... You did? I turned off the notifications for this. I gotta figure that out. I gotta put a stop to that shit. There. Um, so tell us about why. Okay, well, I will tell, talk about inspiration and Hawaii and such. I'm glad to hear that one since well. Ola Killer B213. Uh, thanks, Jeebus. Jeebus has to make things crass all the time. Uh, so, Inspiration. It's like, for me, my experience of inspiration is one of, well, inspiration, I guess what I'm getting at is that inspiration tends to be linked to motivation in some ways. So it's like, if you feel inspired to, in a creative activity, then you're probably going to be motivated to do that thing. And if you're not feeling very inspired, you're not going to be very motivated. So it's kind of like the two go hand in hand. Um, but it may not be the case that for everybody, inspiration is a particularly predominant motivating factor. So, like, I wonder if it's the case that um, if for ISTPs or ISFPs or Polar NE, maybe they don't rely on inspiration at all. They assume that the correctness of a given path that they determine their NIs is not transient. They can rely on it indefinitely. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> um, you know, I feel inspired so much to live stream by Delilah's arrival. And we had a, an 
a good time driving back from the airport, I think. Uh, Dwyer told some very interesting stories about <laughs> a trip to Cabo. Yeah. Oh, wow. I had no idea what was going <laughs> on in Cabo. Um, <laughs> Me neither. So that was interesting. Uh, it was. Well, Chivas, I think that's really pushing my luck. <laughs> Um, so the thing is, uh, I, I felt, it's, in, I knew I would somewhat enjoy and appreciate this when Horsey arrived, that she brings this youthful kind of high energy, like ESTP attack life thing, you know, yeah. that it's, it's kind of inspirational to see her. Be such a full blast extrovert. Yeah. <laughs> mm hmm. <laughs> yeah. She's like Guy Sensei in the spring of his youth from Naruto. <laughs> um, she's, uh, she's fun. And it's interesting, she, she likes Rachel a lot. I liked a little a lot too. It's interesting to see her just go right into the duality thing, you know, seems like, <laughs> right? And but also she's she's very, um, got a lot of metacognition, so she's, especially we've got FE stuff, she's policing her own FE the whole time. Oh, shit, I'm talking to you too much, Rachel, because you keep seeming so interested in my, in my stories. Hi, Sarah. What sign is Delilah? Her birthday is September 30th. I don't know what sign that is. She's a Libra. Does she seem like a Libra? Yeah. What are, what's the stereotype of Libras? Relationshipy. Relationshipy. She is relationshipy. That's my only daughter. Delilah is my daughter. And she is 21 years old. And she's here with her boyfriend Danny, and they're in that room over there. And we're in this room over here. And there's this hexagon room in the middle that's I, I counted it this morning. I think I referred to it yesterday as an octagon. It's not an octagon, it is a hexagon. There are only six sides to this oh. shape one, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, and then out here we each have our own like section of the lanai. Yeah. Which is nice. Uh, so, are you talking about my girlfriend, Rachel Lejan? Thanks. I appreciate that. You are correct. I am Libra assistant, ascendant, and my husband is a Libra son. We are fair people, and the Libra example of fair means you're fair to the point of losing out in negotiations. Delilah is that. She's fair. Um, I'm right on cue, Jeebus. Um, did you pay for premium Wi Fi then? No. So you're like having fine Wi Fi on regular No, I'm the only driver on the thing. So okay. uh, I'll take you. But whenever you guys want to go, there's. Okay, later. Uh, yeah, I figure you guys want to rest for a bit. Yeah. Later. Okay, so we will bring them on to one of these at some point. Posted a big five test today, and my results were INFJ idealist. Well, this is mom. I don't think that you are an INFJ. I just don't think so. So uh, that might be your big five test results. I don't know why your big five test results would be a, <laughs> a cognitive function type, but uh, you know. She, was, she doesn't want to be in the video. She says she looks gross. She does not actually look gross, but that's what she says. She's not really that into uh, being on video for some reason. I don't know why. She's uh, very extroverted, likes to talk a lot, but is. Um, she's. Well, good for him. I wish him all the best. 
I have no ill will towards Eric Thor. I like Eric Thor. I think he makes plenty of good videos. Uh, pleasant to watch. Not necessarily super informative for me, but I'm not really his target audience, I don't think. You know, his target audience is, is people who are a little bit less familiar with functions and stuff. Um, so that's fine. What did my dad do for work before he retired? He had a lot of different jobs. He was uh, principal of the school. He was uh, assistant superintendent of the school district. He was a, he worked for the county for a long time, like with the regional center, which is like, that's basically like a superintendent for county stuff. And then he, he was also, he ran a census bureau branch one one nineteen eighty. He he was in charge of the like Compton, like you know, that whole area, Compton and Watson stuff, you know. Mm -hmm. And got some interesting pictures. Do I have a target audience? No. No, I don't really have a target audience. But then I'm not an INFJ. Well I ever consider being a principal? Well I ran a school for a while. I I mean I was a principal basically. Oh, I was the director. I was the director at Kudos, which I did. I wasn't, I guess I technically wasn't the principal, but I did all the, I was, I did all the, the being in charge work. Really. I hired people, I fired people, I did scheduling, so just administration beyond anyone's wildest nightmares. If you don't like TE, Hmm, there's a job for you. <laughs> there's a job for you. I was good at it, though. It's like demonstrative TE. You know, the world expects me to TE, I'll TE. It's my job, my boss is there telling me what to do, I'll do it. Fine. And yeah, TE. But uh, I don't like it. It's, it's just like, <sighs> keep track of stuff. <sighs> Be bossy. I don't mind really being the boss, but I don't, I don't enjoy any of the bossy parts of it. I'm not like an ENFJ or an ENTJ mm. who sort of gets off on hierarchy. I don't get That's off on it at all. I have no problem busting jobs if I have to. Yeah, yeah. Socrates, you are a modern day Socrates and you're our God of Garden computing modern day youth and oh, corrupting modern day youth and thinking outside their parents' box. I, you know, it's like, I don't know. I don't really. The only. I hope I corrupt people into more nuanced understanding of things. That's a good way of putting it. What have you guys been doing while in Hawaii and what do you have planned? Well, we had quite an exciting trip to the beach yesterday. Yeah, we did. It was raining. It looked like it could have been the coast of Ireland, but it was Hawaii and the water was like aqua. It was so interesting. And uh, we took down Mindy's Club to the beach. <laughs> yeah, we did. The Mindy's Club. <laughs> We, 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 you know, it's going to be pretty, it's going to be a pretty exciting episode because we are in Hawaii, many, many clubs goes on vacation to Hawaii, and who do they meet? Oh my but God. Hawindi, who's like a Hawaiian version of Mindy, who tries to basically socially play like social cutthroat ENFJ type stuff with Mindy. Um... I bought a bong here, Judas. That's how I've been managing without my bong. I bought one here. It's out of the am I? <laughs> the question is, though, uh, we will have to um, we'll have to get more weed before our trip's over. We don't have that much weed left, and well, I I am sure I can. I just uh, I don't know if I can legally exactly like i think it's medicinal only maybe here i'm pretty sure i think it's decriminalized as of now for for recreational but it's still not legal to sell in the stores well ss 
Thank you for saying so. <laughs> you are correct. She is a beauty. Yes, I did bring her with me. I brought like seven grams, so that's not going to last a very long time. <laughs> <laughs> what names would Hawaiian we have? I don't know. Probably. Pineapple Express. Aluki Luki Luki Loko Loko. Wow, 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 wow. Um, you know, I had, I got weed the last time I was here in Hawaii, in Kona. Uh, just by, I didn't even look for it. So I was just walking <laughs> down the street and somebody came up to me and said, hey, you want to buy some weed? And I was like, yes, I do. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Pineapple Express is a you know, traditionally Hawaiian strain, uh, but I'm sure Hawaii has lots of their own strains here that you don't get in California. No, definitely. I mean, it was sort of a reference to the movie, too. <laughs> there is a movie yeah. called Pineapple Express. Yeah. Isn't it illegal to fly with weed? Not really, apparently. Not from LA to Hawaii, anyway. It's like LAX has made it official. Their rules are you are allowed to have weed at the airport. And so it's it's still technically illegal on a federal level, but um, if you have a small amount of weed, I guess TSA just doesn't care. Or I, I don't know. That's what I, in my understanding of that. But I researched it ahead of time and it looked like it wasn't going to have any problem. <laughs> so um, I, I also, you know, packed it up. Carefully make sure not to bring too much. And so there you go. Hi, one, two, three. Did you use some profanity? Is there a Hawaiian bird in the condo? No, there's no Hawaiian bird in the condo. Yeah, I put it in a check bag. Are there comedy clubs near you? I'd watch if I'd watch your stand up. Well, thanks, one, two, three. I could probably find a place to do open mic comedy um, at some point. Uh, Cameron's house sitting for me. He's watching Kitty, feeding Kitty, and uh, and feeding my fish too. So, yeah. How is Rachel's health? It's fine. How's your health, Rachel? It's good. It's good? Yeah. yeah. She's healthy as a horse. <laughs> <laughs> One, two, three. You are offending my sensitive ears with your naughty words. I, my ears are sensitive and my eyes translate your typing directly into sounds. You know what will be a fun? See a hypnos hypnosis show at a comedy club. I don't think I'm very hypnotizable. No. <laughs> I agree. I saw it like at college once and I was just like, I don't want to be those people. <laughs> it's <is> weird. <laughs> wear earmuffs, you sarcastic funky boy. Um, I could wear earmuffs. Do you think I'd look better to my ears stick out too much? I could wear earmuffs. Rachel, what has been the biggest help for you getting more balanced again? Sleep and bud. <laughs> Sleep's good. Weed's good. I need a lot of sleep too. Look, the first two nights here, we both got like 12 hours each night. That's nice. And, uh, you know, this morning we woke up and we went right back to bed and napped all the way until I had to go get to the airport. Yeah, that's nice. Mm -hmm. it's funny. Hmm. Yeah, I wouldn't want to see hypnosis. I, I, I have trouble like believing the whole. I don't know. It just makes me feel yeah. Yeah. Twos. It's a glaze, actually. Because when I first had it, it was close to this, and I wanted to do a craft. It's my only glaze. Why don't you shoot a scene with Rachel? Hmm. Typical. Oh. 
We are shooting a scene right now. It's called Live Stream. It's a great scene. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> it's the sort of joyous wonder that everyone can enjoy for a million years forever. Yeah. Everyone wants a rich. Ah, yeah, yeah, with the rich. <laughs> ah, yeah, yeah, with the rich. I can't lie. There's some times where it's like so blue that I like LOL because it's just ridiculous. Like, right. Why well, isn't there more crossover of people interested in cognitive functions a union concept? Well, I think cognitive functions was this one singular good, you know, genuinely inspired, discovered idea. Uh, the rest of the stuff is it's just all metaphor, basically. Yeah. The thing is, and there's nothing wrong with that. It's it's good metaphor, as metaphor goes, but it doesn't stand out amongst the class of equivalent metaphor mm -hmm. that's written by other people. Cognitive function stands out as a good idea that actually explains something to the exclusion of other ideas, which means to say it's his most TI sound notion. Now, he didn't do it in a very TI sound way, but underlying his metaphorical mushy mush is a TI sound notion. And it, and that makes him deserving all the credit in the world for being a genius for coming up with it, you know. So I don't mean to be dissing the guy at all. Well, didn't Jungian Jung 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 come first before Myers Briggs? They were yeah. inspired. Yeah. So you you made up the idea of cognitive functions, and then Myers Briggs made up the idea of personality types. The MBTI. Yeah. Um. That's a terrible idea, Jeebus. Why are you trying to solve Rachel's? I have had pretty random thoughts before. Like <laughs> thoughts that make no sense to be thinking about it all given the current circumstances. I don't want to take lessons. Yes, that's like we'll thinker. I had those thoughts the other night when I was thinking about tort law and and uh, <laughs> just the word tort and like, car insurance <laughs> for no reason. And I, you know, it's like I'm lying in bed here in Hawaii. <laughs> I'm wondering about how the, the linkage between contractual limitations and liability afforded by car insurance companies and tort law and liability uh, in uh, liability lawyers who, you know, sue people like that. So, uh, so, you know, it's like, yeah, I do think about things that make no sense given the circumstances very often. I, I'm much more aware of that than I, uh, <laughs> Okay, fine, Jesus. Um, you know, you can't you can't just expect me to assume you're not trolling, right? It, it's you're, I gotta be. I gotta play it safe here with you and assume that you are. Sometimes you seem extra cool, but then it turns out you're just trolling again. You know, it's hard to tell. You know. You gotta, you gotta cut me some slack there. In that regard. I do my best to afford everybody a brand new slate every every day, but it's not always possible. <sighs> One macro dose mushrooms. <laughs> yeah, well, I like to medium dose them when I do them at all, but I, I don't know. I don't think I'm kind of done with. Try to be done with drugs in general. It's like, I just don't think that I'm at a part of my life right now where drugs seem to do a lot of net benefit to me. It's like, uh, has it, Noah? I mean, maybe it has. I don't know. But the thing is, she's she's not experiencing any. She doesn't. What she needs to do is sleep. That's I'm not it. interested. Yeah, she's. I'm like, I don't know. There aren't any I symptoms. I know it's just I'm not looking for like not looking forward to that shit. I don't know. For me, it's a sudden thing. I have fears and that shit. I'm not interested. <laughs> okay, so here's a question I'd be interested in having. Rachel's thoughts on, especially as well, which is what strengths do ENFPs have in picking up women? My initial thought would be it's that FI tool function. I mean, they they can sort of put on the the I like you a lot kind of energy. They're attracted people too, yeah. Um, 
And it's like, it, it probably ENFPs do a much better job of actually paying attention to the other person, not what they're saying, but to the other person than ENFPs do. I would guess. Yeah. Physical stuff, though. It's interesting. I don't know. They're, they are more, like, when it comes to, like, metaphysical stuff, too, it's a thing of discussion that we talk about, like, easily and readily, where, like, sometimes, like, I'm like, I don't want to talk about it. I'm, I listen more to the stories. Well, look, one, two, three, if we're talking about what skills can an ENFP bring to the table as a pickup artist, we're going to have to establish those skills as being skills distinct from some alternative so we can understand them. So it's like you're still getting up with some comparison. It's like, yeah. uh, for me to understand why it is exactly that ENFPs might, or what tools ENFPs might bring to the table as a pickup artist, I have to think, well, how are they different from me, for example? I don't really, I don't really, I've never tried to be a pickup artist, and I've never, I mean, I like, I did look into, like basic advice, this fucker again. <sighs> okay. So, um, uh, we are drinking. Partially Kona coffee, Kona coffee blend. We had full Kona coffee when we first got here. We had a a free bag of it that they gave us to check in. Mm -hmm. We're gonna have to go buy more coffee here because we've gone through all the free coffee. Yeah, and we've also gone through all the free, uh, not the free. We got also gone through all the coffee creamer that we bought the first day here. It's only the third day we're here. We've already gone through a whole thing of coffee creamer. So. we have to go back to the store pretty soon here with Delilah and we'll get more coffee creamer and uh, and also buy some coffee. Because mm. I do like to drink a lot of coffee. Yeah. Do I prefer Hawaii over Mexico? I do. What about you, Rachel? I didn't really get any sort of view of like Mexico at all. Like I just saw the like strand of shops the tourist stuff, and then the water, and then like we went to Senor Frogs, we was not even like, so I can't judge. Um, this is my place. Unfortunately, it is my place for you. Unfortunately for you. I'm not going this anywhere. This is beautiful. Yes. <laughs> I am not going anywhere. Abdullah, Muhammad, Anwar, Al Asadi. I am staying on YouTube, and it doesn't matter how many spite monkeys there are and how much people hate me, want to destroy me or whatever. Too bad for them. <laughs> So your FI makes others feel fine and your TE makes them T? Something like that. Hmm. Oh, good. Thank you, Winston's mom. Hmm. Well, TE, I wouldn't say it necessarily makes them a doer. It makes them a goal-oriented person in general. So they'll go like, I know what I want here. I want to pick up on this chick, and I'm going to pursue that outcome. ENTPs don't know that. Yeah. They're, just they're not sure what they want to do, and they're not sure what they are doing. At least that's my experience. It's like, I, am I picking up on this chick, or do I want to pick up on this <laughs> chick? I don't know. How do I know that? Where do I turn? What book do I look in to find the answer to this question? <laughs> Her health is fine, Jeebus. Jesus, why are you so worried about Rachel's health? <laughs> this whole taking away thing. 
No, we're not all goal oriented. I'm not. I'm not goal oriented, obviously. I'm not either. That's like something that that's a question. T E six to E seven, we're not goal oriented. Thank you, Noah, if you're talking to me about that. Uh, even if people disagree with you, I can tell you're a good guy. I like to think I'm a good guy. I, I, I believe myself to be a good, moral, up, upright yeah. person who's preaching the good, who's working for good in the world, who's opposing evil. And so, um, you know, if I'm not goal-oriented, I'm like principle-oriented like that which is not a goal, right? To oppose evil is not a goal, it's a process. I I have situation, like I was in a situation where they would ask every day what the goal would be. And I'd be like, what if it's just nothing? Like, <laughs> like why does that have to be every day? <laughs> I don't have a goal every day. Nothing is an answer. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's the other way around, one, two, three. If you can use your FI, you know what the goal is. That's the problem. I can't use my FI for shit. <laughs> so I don't know what any goal is. Um, moral realism. We don't need God. We don't need religion or God to know right from wrong. Well, that's true. Uh, but it doesn't hurt. However, it can. <laughs> yeah, the guilt. <laughs> yeah. It doesn't hurt, however it can. So uh, yeah, it's weird. It's a tricky one, right there, because I think sometimes um, you know, it's like sometimes it's helpful to to have resolved certain questions yeah i mean i think faking something is like yeah you have to i don't know i i, I did I, I did have to ultimately turn to faith to uh to liberate myself from the prison of rationalism i see that and it was good that i did it changed everything really but uh Maybe not everybody does. I'm not saying necessarily everybody does, but I don't even know. It, it wasn't that I didn't uh, I didn't know right from wrong or anything. I was still a moral person before I had faith. I wasn't an immoral person, but I was a I was ontologically I wasn't yar. Nice. So you know, if a boat is is properly balanced, it's said to be yar. Now, I've been corrected on this, I believe. It's not actually pronounced yar. Maybe, even though it's spelled yar. But I, I don't know. Doesn't Regardless. that suit, like, pirates? Yar. Yeah, but they're saying it in a different way. They're saying it like a yar. When I'm saying, <laughs> I'm using the word, is the boat yar. Right. Well, so what I'm saying is that Prior to faith, my boat was not yard. And what that means is that it was too much stuff piled on one side and not enough stuff piled on the other side so that it was tilty. Uh -huh. Now my boat is much more yard. And I got to say, uh, Rachel Yar is my boat quite well, too. <laughs> I am not a born-again Christian, Jeebus. Oh, well. God. It's not that. Which soul are you? Vegetative, sensitive, or rational? Vegetative. Sensitive? I think I'm sensitive soul? Yeah. If I had those three cheap choices. <laughs> I, you know, I suspect I'm sensitive soul. Or I might be yeah. rational. I'm either no. sensitive or rational. No, I'd say sensitive. What is my faith? Uh, a behavior I engage in periodically. <laughs> How do you like that answer? That's a great one. 
What are Eric and Rachel's Enneagram types? I am seven and she is seven. <laughs> I'm seven, eight, four. I, I don't know. I don't know what comes after the seven for her. She's got a seven. four as well. I'm not sure if she's yeah. an eight or not. I, I, when I'm totally chill, it's like when I took that test, I took it like twice and I, I'm like, if I'm chill, I can see the nine. You're a rationalist soul, Felicity. That's my take on you. Whereas I'm a sensitive soul. Yeah, that's why periodically we cause them enlightenment because I'm moist air and they're dry air. There seems to be a plethora of slightly different schools of thought about cognitive functions and how that stack works. that are not interchangeable, which one should it focus on? Mine to the exclusion of all others. I am correct about it, and nobody else is. And I'm probably the only person who's saying that too. Yeah. Because I'm right. <laughs> That's why I want you to do the whole thing about Kurt Cobain. I think he's an INFJ, but I can't, there's nothing definitive about that. All I can do is have to deal with that. I think Taylor probably pissed her off. I haven't been even on Facebook since then. What happened? I guess Taylor keeps her out of the Facebook group. So. Oh, shit. <laughs> Anyway, I got to deal with that at some point. I'll get her, I'll get her back. It's on Facebook. She'll be back. It's fine. It's fine. I'll, I'll, I'll smooth things over. Hi, Ali Malik. Um, you know, I'm a things thing over smoother. Um... Count is out of the Facebook group. Okay, so now it's time to talk a cigarette. The video of Fred during my story. Countess, do you want to come outside, smoke a cigarette with me? Or was you right about what? It was more of a clear indication of playfulness, but fair perspective. I don't know what you're talking about. I'm not sure what you're referring to. No, I was actually going to bring you outside, but you may find when we come outside with me that it's too loud out there because of the fountain. And if that's the case, I could bring back inside if you're annoyed by the noisy fountain. Okay. So, welcome to the Lanai. It's a, like a Hawaiian patio, basically, is what they call a lanai. You can hear birds chirping. You can hear the sound of running water. This is, it, it brings the whole Hawaii experience to you. Uh, you can probably smell the flowers. You might be able to see the giant spiders. We've got some giant spiders around here. There we go. There we go. Yeah, definitely some plumeria in the mix. Some Rachel's coffee. Uh, court jester, Queen's Gambit is really smart and insightful. That's hilarious. Uh, I have a question. What types doubt themselves all the time, and even if they have a deep understanding, will still be confused about their type? Only because that's me, Lamau. INFP is the number one answer to that. Uh, ENFP, another good answer to that. Are you think yourself introverted or extroverted? What would be your thought process if I were an ENFP doing pickup? I mean, on finding things to like about the person and then conveying to her that I like them or something or uh, liking the person a lot. I, I don't know. I have no idea what it feels like to be an ENFP. You, you walk in the room with your vegan AF shirt on and go from there. I don't know.
might be might. It's more likely you're going to have an INFP who thinks they're an INTP than the other way around. But it's possible the other way around, too. Yeah, any tool users especially, because that's, you know, SE is pulling the trigger, making a decision, being, being final on something. It said vegan AF. No, it said vegan AF. This guy's shirt I saw in Kona the other night, walking on the street. Clearly an ENFP. Uh, his shirt said vegan AF. That's... That sums up ENFP in a nutshell. They're going to wear a shirt. It's like, from ENTP's perspective, they're, they're doing the wrong thing in the right way or the right thing in the wrong way. Either, no matter one way or the other, it seems to always turn out and feel like that, you know? <laughs> well, well, good, Cloud. Harry's thinking about ESFPs and clouds. <laughs> you, should, uh, you should go watch him go out and, and enjoy his insight and take advantage of his wisdom so that you can look for him. I was thinking about how like ESFP like, foundations are like clouds. ESFP foundations are clouds? Yeah. It's true. Cloud's a good name for you, Cloud, if you're really an ESFP. Oh, wow. Well. Because you have to rewatch them instead of wasting your time here. So, uh, I don't know how to pick up on chicks if I'm an ENFP. One, two, three. How am I supposed to know that? You tell me how do ENFPs pick up on chicks, Rachel? They don't. They don't, she says. What do they do? They just wait for the chicks to pick them on them? Yeah, but uh, I think it usually happens. Hmm. Yeah, it's like usually an INTP, once they understand cognitive functions well enough, which they will pretty quick, um, then uh, then they're going to come to the conclusion like, okay, I can't really I can't really get away from the the fact that I'm TI. I, I my TI won't let me ignore the objective truth of this at some point. And once they learn enough about functions, like I remember, I talked to Horse Mumbler and he seemed very F in a lot of ways. And so I said, "Are you sure you're not an INFP?" And he's like, "No, no, no, my DSC. I, I, it, it, I've already thought about it a lot. And there's no chance." And so. Uh, My brain is small. Oh, this intelligence cloud. <laughs> is is that what you think makes somebody smart? Is having a large brain? Have you heard about surface area before? Uh oh, here's Countess. You kicked me out because I forced you to come to terms with the fact that if your loved one was a victim, you are just desensitized from the fact that you went to prison and a shitty parent. Countess, ah, Jesus, you shouldn't call him a shitty parent. It's not true. Okay, he is not a shitty parent. The fact that he was victimized does not make him a shitty parent. And that's the simple fact of the matter. I've been to the man's house. I've hung out with him and his daughter. He's an excellent parent. That's all there is to it. Good justice right there, bag. You know what else is small? Your thumbs. Oh, okay. Eric, tell Countess the cloud loves her. Countess, cloud loves you. Nice. Nobody asks his judgment on it. I didn't say you were cringy. I didn't say anything like that. I'm just telling you the truth about his parenting, okay? If you were not a good parent, I wouldn't defend him. But I've seen it. I know it. He is, and I'm not going to just let that go unchallenged, you know? So, uh, I mean, just because there's a lot of SE in a house doesn't mean somebody's a bad parent, you know? 
For hitting on who? Your daughter? How old is she? I agree with Winston's mom here. I think he's sitting below the belt to affect somebody's parenting. If you don't have a kid, you don't know, but it, you don't want to. Okay, Countess One. Well, look, but you don't get to control how he responds to that sort of thing, right? You don't get to say, it's like, it's ridiculous, you know? He, he, he'll respond to it how he feels appropriate. And he, it's, it, he's obviously not, whatever. I, I don't even want to get into this shit. It's appropriate what you said. Wow, 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 wow. <laughs> oh, so Matthew, is that what happened? Matthew didn't call his daughter? I, I, I don't know what, I don't know what's going on. Anyway, um, Why? Well, they just, there's a lot of a lot of little bit of back and forth here going on. And that's you know not the end of the world. People sometimes have conflicts with each other. Analyze their functions. What is going on? Aside for the reason for the incompatibleness. There's a way to be respectful and prove your point at the same time. Well, I mean, it sounds like cats <laughs> cross the lines. That's what happened. <laughs> Uh, thanks, Raphael Bruno. <laughs> That's fine. You know what? This thing doesn't bother me. It doesn't harsh my mellow because it doesn't involve me. <laughs> not, so it doesn't no. really harsh my mellow. Um, but yeah, that that's the thing. It's like you're gonna, you're really. When you start talking about people parenting and stuff, you you cross into areas where they're just not going to uh, not going to respond well with that. Nobody is. Ah, <laughs> the joys of free speech. How about it? Oh, just the back and forth here in this thing. So, okay. Um, I would look like Vsauce. Who's Vsauce? This one I was trying to do a lot. I need to go to another table in the cafeteria. This one seems crowded and no one's eating any cheese. I don't even remember. Last, like, I think of cafeterias and I do not think of cheese. That is social criticism. That That's not a moral issue. Um, well, yeah. you know, cringiness is not a moral issue. It, there's no getting around that fact. <sighs> okay, well, regardless of all of this stuff, um, you know, we're in Hawaii and we are going to go to the um, store pretty soon and oh, that's so nice I don't know if the store is an INTJ or not I'm no expert on random people that I don't know very well as type so nobody is really I, I would assume I take it with face value until I Find some reason to Yo, conclude otherwise. Up? There's no need for that. Um, uh, I'm running out of electricity here. Rachel's ranching. You know you've gotten in trouble with Rachel's ranching. Uh. 
Uh, I need to find the electrical meter. The electrician, the electricity plug. Where is my electricity plug? I don't find my electricity plug. Hmm. Maybe I won't find my electricity plug. Where is it? It's going to be here someplace. Um. Huh. I found it. Okay. Mia goes in Mia, like. This is not a good plug. Where's the closer plug? Over there? Yeah. All right. Put this over here instead. Like Mia. And then this goes in here, like Mia. And there we go. So, what makes Eric's model different from others? Good question. So, the first thing that makes it different is the correct parsing of human reality into four distinct planes whereby attention plays out. Um, namely, there's a metaphysical external plane, which is where we're on right now, basically. Metaphysical internal, physical internal, physical external. And to Secondly, it's a matter of understanding these things as processes. And a third big difference is the fact that I provide an actual skills test that can be sort of binarily determinate about something. Nobody else has anything of the sort. And the thing is, <laughs> it's falsifiable too. I provide a falsification me mechanism, which nobody else provides. It's actually hypothetical. It's not just um, metaphorical. And so, uh, the thing is, I have a lot of, I have a lot of videos about it. Um, there's a playlist that's about my book that's specifically about cognitive functions, which is not, which is a little dated at this point. I understand things in a more complete way than I used to. Um, but it's, it's, there's a lot to it, I guess. It's, it's, it's something that I can I can win the arguments on, but it's not something that's very easy to it's yeah. Do you know what's an important thing for ENFPs to do daily or at least have in their morning routine? I mean, I don't I, I have no idea. It's like yes, I'm in Hawaii, Stephen Ring. Uh, I'm in Kona, the Kona area. Actually, at Keoho Bay, but um, it's near near Kona. It's like I don't know what exactly I'm, what what I would need in my daily routine. Except I generally I do better when I take a nap at some point. Um. Yeah, it is. It's pretty cool to be here. I, I like being in Hawaii. It's nice. Uh, this is Rachel's first time in Hawaii, which is makes it fun for me because, you know, somebody for whom it's new. I've been here. I was here a lot as a kid, but uh, um, you do woke to nap. My SI is getting better. I, I was reflecting last night, in fact, on how every time I try to understand experience, 
I default to understanding it as an SI thing. What's well, the only way I have to understand experience? All experience for me is experiential on an SI level. It's not really experiential very much on other levels. Now I get FI experiential time with Rachel um, and that's nice and uh, it, it also like confusing. Like it turns me into like a baby or something. I don't know. Um, we, I went and picked up Delilah and her boyfriend, my daughter and her boyfriend from the airport today and they're resting. And in a little while they want to go to the store. So we're going to go to the store, but, uh, we do have some various Hawaii like activities. We're not going to go surfing, but, um, we might punch a few sharks probably. Did I live stream with Jesus? With Jesus yet? No. Hi, Rachello. We are indeed enjoying our vacation. It's a uh, it's a tropical wonder wonder powwow of glory. Or we've got geckos on the palm tree outside of Berlinai. We've got spiders. We've got. Uh, Birds of all sorts, the variety of birds around here, I tell you. A lot of different birds, very active. Obviously, there's no, like nobody really hunts birds, you know? So, um, bird population is just sort of boom. How can I get better NI in a healthy way? Well, I think everybody gets better at their fourth slot function as they, as they age just sort of unavoidably. Um, you get better at it because you suffer the consequences of it, of not having enough of it so many times. Like, um, I, I only, I could only go on a boat so many times before I realized, no, I'm not going on any more boats on the ocean. I get too seasick, it's too miserable, I hate it too much, no. But I still could go on it like, oh, maybe this time will be different, like five times or five times or something before I finally be just like, no, no more, Eric. Be, don't be so slow to pick this up, you know? Um, and the same thing is true with my with my sleeping. I I don't I don't naturally do a good job of sleeping regularly like I should, like the same time every day and all that kind of stuff, you know? Um, I mean, the thing is, I think, it, you know, but this, this, I would actually disagree with Rachel here. Uh, I think that that's one area with your fourth slot, it's so self oriented. Now it may be because it's SI for me, but it's so like, you're trying to do what you need to do in that area to get what you need to get and to enable your other shit to work, you know, that you probably already know when your NI let you down and you go, Fuck, you know, talking to my dad right now. Um, if I was talking to my dad, uh, I would just, I wouldn't even bother. But that polar NI, you can't do anything about it. You really can't. You're, you're screwed. But the fourth slot, you can't help but get a little better at it as you get older. And so the thing I like to say to people in general, as somebody who's older than most people I talk to, is uh, give your give your later self some credit. Like, assume that you two are going to grow. Assume your late, preserve resources and opportunities for your later self. In a sense, like, don't decide at 18 that you want that big tattoo. Give your later self some credit. Let, let later self make some decisions. Um, so there are two types of intelligence, fluid and crystallized. One grows, one stops growing. Hmm. I mean, I think there's, uh, it's true that like from a purely process oriented standpoint, Probably my introverted thinking is a little less on point than maybe it once was. Um, just because of 
Increased laziness, maybe, or just, I don't know. Uh, so, so it's like, so the polar seventh slot negatively impacts your use of second slot. And is eighth slot simply non-existent? No, no, no. Seventh slot doesn't negatively impact your use of second slot. It's because you overuse your tool function. Because your tool function is your tool function, you don't use the other variety of the same function at all, basically. So since I always use TI as a default to analyze everything and deliberate about everything, then as a consequence, I don't use um, my introverted feelings. My, since I'm always using a disinterested calculus, I'm never using an interested calculus. And, hey, Rachel, can you grab me another beer while you're in there? Um, so, uh, eight slot can manifest negatively, but the thing is about eight slot is you're actually quite good at it. It's quite balanced for you. You tend to not overuse it, and but you only use it when it serves your dominant function. So it's like the example I like to use is uh, that I wrote a, a book, Gospel of the Pantheon. I had the SE to, to do all of that, to complete that, but I didn't have the SE to send it out to publishers or agents or something because it no longer served my actual intuition at that point to do to have the execution. So as an ENFP, your TI is seventh polar. You might not as well have it at all. <laughs> it's like my FI. I, if I'm trying to make decisions based on my own feelings, I'm going to make poor decisions. If, um, if, whereas if I try to use my SE, I'll probably have good, good outcomes from it in general. SE is pretty successful for me. Um, it, it, it's, undervalued in the sense that it doesn't seem to really matter to me a whole lot whether whether something gets concretized or not it doesn't matter to me as much as it ought to perhaps if something gets concretized um, and i don't like being pushed forward into a decision before i had a chance to deliberate it all out myself you make your best decisions based on your feelings Right. In fact, you shouldn't make decisions based on TI logic. What's the most Hawaiian thing you've seen while on vacation? Um, okay, hold on. Listen, Countess, I am not protecting anybody, first of all. I am not protecting anybody. I am telling you the truth about his parenting. Did I defend him on that point? Yes, because what you said was wrong. It was false. He is not a bad parent at all. You are wrong about that. So I corrected you. That doesn't mean I'm protecting anybody. If I were protecting him, I'd be removing your comments here. I'd be removing your chats, right? So don't be busting my chops just because I corrected you about something about which you are wrong. I'm not saying you're not, you don't have some points that have, are valid here as well. You may very well do so. But the one thing that seemed to require me to step in and voice my perspective on it was your false accusation that Taylor is a bad parent. So, um, why do you use any so rarely only when making jokes? I don't see your FE and SI. Well, that's because you don't know what any is, I suppose. Any is the ability to parse out all the possible responses to this question and come up with the one that's going to serve your interests in the moment, as this one does now, or the one that's going to prove most logically correct, as this one also does. But um, it's it's the fact that when I'm talking and there's nobody even here, I can sort of muse about things. My extroverted intuition is most obviously engaging others when it manifests as humor. That's true. But ideation that it's non-humorous is not necessarily non, uh, not extroverted intuition. 
Okay, well, listen, I, I, I've already indicated in this live stream that I plan to unblock her, but I haven't gotten around to it yet. So if you can deduce from that whatever you wish, or if you insist on discussing it further, I guess I'm available to do that at the moment, but it's not really the topic I want to talk about, frankly. Um, my explanation is very SI now. Cloud, you don't understand anything about cognitive functions. What makes that SI? What do you think makes that SI? Explain your reasons. That's a good question. It's, it's a good like question people you. say that kind of shit all the time, like make random statements like that, and then they have no idea what they're talking about. I don't understand why they would do that. Um, <laughs> precipitory. What do you mean by precipitory there? I, I want to Google that word. You told me confirmation that I already know, but that's necessarily the case with extroverted intuition. Uh, precipitory. Oh, you misspelled it, but yeah, it is a word. Characterized or by or involving participation, providing the opportunity for individual participation. No, that's participatory. That's like a medical word. Oh, precipitating. Okay, I get it. It means precipitating. Um, it means coming. It's, a, it's it's the antecedent of the consequent. It refers to that. So, um, no, I'm not ESFJ cloud. Jesus Christ. I mean, what do you think about all the music I make? Doesn't that count as extroverted intuition cloud? All the words I write, all the lyrics I write, all the rap songs, and and regular written songs. Does that not count as extroverted intuition? What about all like the poetry and stuff I've written, and the fiction novel I wrote, and the grammar book I wrote, and the critical thinking book I wrote? Does none of that count as extroverted intuition? It's all generated from nothing except my previous knowledge and my ideation. So, you know, think about it a little bit. I mean, I like using my third too, FE, but it's not dominant. If I'm not using SI now, I'm using FE now. I'm FEing you. It's not dominant, it's not what I normally do. Um, but, you know, because we're not really discussing the arguments per se, uh, the, the only way to, to effectively establish Primacy here in this point is with FE. You're not with TI polar. You're not going to really, if you really are ESFP. I still, I still have my doubts. Um, people like to label actions that can be observed as cognitive functions, but different functions that are taking the same actions, right? Mujin has got the exact right point here. So that in the example I made is in the shower. If I'm taking a shower, it can be SI if I'm paying attention to how I'm feeling in the shower, my experience and my body. But it can be SE too if I'm not. If I'm in a hurry to get myself clean and uh, get out the door, then it's not really SI. So it's like what, how you're paying attention when a given behavior or action is occurring is what represents the actual cognitive function. The fact that certain things correlate strongly with this or that or the other is um, is where people get misled a lot. Rachel, are you making sure you have some time alone to recharge? Sleep will already be an issue, and you know how, char how hard it is to ask for some time alone to recharge yourself. Don't be shy about it. I agree, but interestingly, Wes and Bob, Rachel and I uh, both have been sleeping very well together 
even though, you know, it's not a lot. <laughs> but you, you answer that question, Rachel. I'm sorry to answer it for you. No, you answered it well. I was actually going to say that I've been sleeping very well. It was nice. And when I came back to California, I actually had like dreams and stuff, like intermittent dreams about things. It was nice. Slept. Last night I should have put on the log. Yeah. That was the first time she'd ever dreamed of a white Christmas. <laughs> Why are you joking? You hold down the house for a second while I pee. I'm joking. I'm pee. Yeah, sure. I heard that you were a guess an alternate type for me other than ESFP. What would it be? I do not know. We're doing that for math for yourself by aggressively and necessarily making yourself the and timeless you're objecting to your behavior is in not condoning his content. Cloud, I also have an alternative for you. What is Rachel's type? My type is INFJ. <laughs> Where's my dad? Outside. Um, Dennis said he thought he heard my grandpa. My grandpa's not here, is he? That's so funny. I heard his voice here. That's I don't so know. That's so Because I told him, I was like, I told him, because he said it when I was in the shower, and I was like, I was like, his voice, you know, his voice is very distinctive. So, like, if you, because he's only met him once. It's like, yeah, I know. That's why I thought I heard him, because his voice is so distinct. That's so interesting. I'm not sure, though. I'm really not yeah. sure. I really thought that I heard him. Right. Same thing with Danny. And then I come in and he wasn't here. Yeah. So I'm like. That's why I walked out like it's. <laughs> That's um, so funny. I don't know. I'll ask my dad, but are you guys down to the store in the like yes. business? Or yes. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Hey. Hey. Um, are you down to the store soon? Are you all going right, cool. diving Thanks. while in Hawaii? It hasn't been discussed. Hi, Shark Games World. What up? <laughs> that was just Delilah, Eric's daughter. <laughs> She's here with her boyfriend, Danny. I don't think I could date an extrovert for very long. It's different for everyone. Eugene. I think that um, different points in your life, you like date different types and I don't know. <laughs> hey there, Delilah. It's like, what's it like in Hawaii? I was thinking about that song too, actually. Rachel's ENFJ, probably. Well, Cloud, we thought that, and then I fought that pretty hardly. Pretty hard, actually. It was, I just didn't, it didn't suit me. I mean, um, but Eric came, like, when I had a linkage of a memory to a song, he like was like, ah, oh, not ENFJ. Extra reverks are great. They're the ones who get stuff done. I love it. I admire it. Flash it while Eric is not here. No. Legend. Sorry, not happening. I'm a thousand miles away, but damn, it's a very nice compliment. And her SE is not inferior. Mine? My SE was not inferior. 
I would have taken a shower already. What? So what does that mean? Yeah, and I'm saying it is inferior. I would take a shower already if it wasn't. But thank you for that. It's fourth slot? Cool. Yeah, it's about right. Female extrovert with male introvert is more difficult thing to get going than the inverse. I would, I'm, I'm thinking differently on that. I think that's like going to be more common. Rachel, you are ENFJ. Cloud, you should watch Megan Lavoda. That's ENFJ. I had an ENFJ friend, actually. My brother's an ENFJ. I see you. Thank you, Hambone. Thank you, one, two, three. He um, timed out a troll. Hambone. Eric says, Good job, Hambone. What <laughs> a philosophical thinker. It's fine. That's good, Sarah ESFP. Looking amazing, Rachel. Happy to see you. Happy. Aww. Enjoy the rest of your excursion. Thank you, Rachel. Glad you're here. Sister using FV all the time. I use a lot of FV, I do, but I, I can't, it gets to a point. And then I'm like, no. You should watch Frank James stuff. I think he describes that in a recent video. Thanks, Hambone, and hello. We have just returned from our trip, and I will send your native trip to Mark. It's fun. But he's more talkative, and I'm more shy. Sometimes it depends on the situation, right? Like, there are times where I am like, blah, 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 and then Eric is more, like, introverted. But in other times, it's like he takes over, and I'm so happy. Aw, handbone. That's true. Bring James to ENFP. Okay, Cloud. You're sounding ENFP right now. Energies are very extroverted. That's why she looks like an ENFP. Mm -hmm. His brain is melted. Yeah, PT. Why are you leaving my beer? Outside? You opened up another one? No. Tend to not gamble and came away with 300. That's nice. Himself. Pumped out of three day stay. Nice. All meals. Nice. He bought home zero dollars. ESCP. That's my guess. That was my guess too. As soon as you started saying, talking about. Frank James is an INFJ, I agree. Rachel, how would an ENFP best maintain his harem of women? Yeah, you gotta find your own way on that. I think if you need guidance, you probably aren't harem ready yet. Um, I guess... I'm going to wrap this up, take Delilah to the store, get some creamer, 
and some coffee over there as well. And uh, then maybe I'll come back here, make some food or something. I don't know. You don't need advice, just like feedback. Well, I guess it would be, uh, you know, make them all feel special. Have a good day and weekend as well. Probably will live stream at some point tomorrow. Uh, don't forget to eat plain cheese. And aloha.